Welcome to episode three of One Take. In this episode, I speak with my friend Brian Bergen, equity research analyst at Cowan Research. We discuss his work covering leading services firms and the tech disruptions that are shaping behavior, financials, and the services being designed in the future of work. Join me as I learn from Brian's insights and experiences. Um, hello, this is, uh, this is early stages of a, a vodcast experiment, and I am sitting here with my friend Brian Bergen. Um, Brian is a senior equity research analyst at Cowan Research, and uh, wanted to spend uh, as much time as, as, we, as we can, or we have, to, to really chat about our history and uh, chat about the industry that we both found ourselves uh, in somehow, <laughs> tangentially and directly. Um, but I'll start by, by, by saying hello and, and asking you to just introduce yourself. Who are you? Sure. Thanks for having me in. Yeah. Uh, so, as Ian mentioned, I'm a, a senior equity research analyst at Cowan. I cover um, uh, the IT services and business process management space, so broadly the services industry. And as, uh, you know, as we were building coverage in this space several years ago, we, we kind of stumbled on uh, automation as a key theme that we figured would change the industry, their own industry, but also a broader enterprise industry. And you're one of the, the most sort of aware and experienced analysts in this space, and unique because you're an equity research analyst. There's other industry analysts, sure. that are research analysts that are in the space. But you and I met three-ish years ago, maybe a little bit longer ago, at, at, one, at a, an industry event. Um, wasn't a vendor-specific event. It was just a, one of the, the consortium events. What brought you there? What was, I mean, was that, was that the first one you went to? Or were there others? It was, uh, it was probably the second one I was at. Okay. So, but approximately three years ago, yeah. uh, a separate event. You know, I'd, I'd been listening to some of the, the buzzwords around digital, kept yeah. hearing about automation, right. came across RPA, uh, thought it was an interesting topic, and yeah. ultimately thought it had a lot of potential. Obviously changed the way work is being done. And it, it just kind of sent me down to uh, Orlando to a conference. And uh, you know, three years ago, only 50 people at an event. Right. Um, yeah. it, 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 today, we're, we're sitting here at a conference with 2,000. So it, yeah. just the, 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 the type of growth we've seen, I think, is, is yeah. certainly uh, supporting what we thought is the potential here. And, and again, I came at it from a services angle, and not, not so much the software side. So I think a different right. hat than others may have looking at this. Yeah. What did you think the first event that you went to, or the first, second, third event? And did, did the uh, just a bit pure introductory. It was yeah. we, we, we didn't know the acronyms, yeah. uh, and, and yeah. neither did ninety five percent of the audience. Right. Obviously, uh, the big three today in the RPR world were sponsors of this. Work. Certainly weren't big three back then. Yeah. Um, but they were. It was more. Uh, I would say an education se uh, session, and um, I think I was probably the only one from the finance world at I think that you event. Were. It really yeah. was more of an operations and finance and accounting yep. focus more than anything else. Yeah. Um, but then, and then in Erpa, similarly in uh, in New York, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, you know, an industry event in New York that yeah. uh, that we met at. Again, not a big event, right? Back no. then, it was it was small. It was, you know, it was but, Thirty, fifty people right, in a room. It was intimate, and yeah. But but I think getting key stakeholders all in one place to to right. help kind of shape the market, and yeah. and I think that's still occurring today, obviously, with some efforts. You take this back to. I don't know, bosses, partners at Cowan and say, this is interesting. Did anyone believe you? Did they think you were wasting your time so, bouncing to tech conferences? No, from, our, from my angle, um, my client base is institutional investors. Right. So for me to, to be out there looking at, you know, depth yeah. of research is certainly important, important, but for me to be writing about private companies doesn't have right. uh, as high a value. Of, right. so the, in the early stages, uh, you know, it was trying to figure out how to best package this content. Right. And understanding it was going to be, I think, an evolutionary um, yeah. topic, uh, we, we chose to kind of put it in a, a series. Okay. And, and that's, it was one of these, okay, let's give this a shot. Well, I, I had been uh, to CIO events in the past, other technology events in the past that were much yeah. more aligned with what, we, what, with what we normally done sure. uh, from, a, from an equity research standpoint. And this sure. was, okay, we're going to just try something new here. And, yeah. you know, we, we started with an RPA Insights series that, um, you know, if it was then me educating my sales force, the institutional investor, on why this should matter to them. And yeah, it wasn't right. going to matter in that 
fiscal year for any of their particular companies they may own yeah. or prospective companies they were looking at, yeah. but it was something they needed to keep on their radar because it was going to change things. See, this, and this is what I think is so cool about, about you and the insight that you had is you really did stick to it because you're right, cause, because there wasn't anything to invest in from, from your perspective, from right. your customer's perspective. Were you, were you vindicated in some way when Blue Prism went public? I mean, obvious, all of a sudden something was public. Certainly. Did that help? Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I think it, it, from the, the Wall Street angle, is okay, something is here and yeah. it, it may be real. It's obviously the first one, still the right. only one currently, but you then obviously have the other two big ones coming through that right. the likely path where, yeah. where they've yeah. obviously taken a significant uh, you know, level of capital through, through funding rounds. Right. You know, whether they want to choose to say private or move to the public sure. place, that, that I think will open up the, the market much more. And they've They've given you some more numbers too. I mean, I, 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 I try my best to read your newsletter and, and understand even a tenth of it just because it is, it is financial and, and very um, quant driven. And, uh, and I, I understand the individual words <laughs> that's stitched together. Um, but you know, some, of the, some of those RPA vendors do have um, financing now in the form of venture capital. So that, that gives you something to Significant to, levels to of, you yeah. know, um, significant levels of valuation um, you know, seven billion up for one, yeah, yeah. Uh, three billion for another. It's it's yeah. between between those numbers, and I think the absolute growth rates. That's what really gets people to open their eyes, and right. it's okay now. I have to pay attention to this area. Right, that's kind of how this has evolved now, yeah. just over the last six to twelve months. Right. Yeah. No, it really, truly, and as you said, it's the 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 trajectory is is one of two things, but one of them could be that they become public, and then you have more numbers to right. To exactly. Not only that, too. You know, you start to look at the um, some of the investors that are in these names. And right. These are these That's are true. important, um, well-respected, you know, high-profile names that oh, are, yeah. that are backing these companies. So yeah. again, another confirmation, I think, of, yeah. of this market and the level of demand that we're going to continue to see. You referenced, you, you do a series now called RPA and AI Insights, RPA AI. Right. Um, you're on It's evolved. It's evolved from RPA now to Intelligent Automation. Oh, we'll probably yeah. be calling it something else yeah, in yeah, yeah. six just, months. Just keep you, adding just acronyms. Just keep the number going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Series, you know? <laughs> um, but so, and, and you mentioned that awareness is high now, right. but a, a maturity or adoption is not. Right. So are you, I, I assume you're, you're you're getting different questions from the, the readers of this Insights newsletter just partly because of the education you've been doing. Um, how have those questions changed over time? Um, I'd say it isn't so much a question of will this matter. It's right. kind of more of a when yeah. does this matter. Okay. Because you still think about some of, um, despite the valuations, the yeah. revenue streams, they are impressive too, but they're right. still not at a scale of a, let's say, an enterprise. Right. You know, large-scale software company that some of yeah. these investors, are, you know, public investors, are used to dealing with. Yes. So it's more so, can they get to that level? Mm -hmm. Certainly, the, the current levels of growth would suggest they can. Yeah. And um, and and at, at, you know, at what point um, do, do they move forward with a, with a different path here? At what point can right. uh, can we participate right. in that type of activity? I think yeah. that, that that's the type of questioning that has changed. Uh, on the other side too, how is it impacting the other industries, like complementary yeah. to services? Is are the how are they navigating, the, right. Really, the yeah. the initial uh, that that awareness on the clients, that the end client side, let's say. Yes. How are the service companies and the consultants reacting to that as their end exactly. clients come to them and say, "I need this product," and oh, by the way, I understand what the pricing and how it works now. Yes. So how, how does that get built in the contract structure? So I think the, the knock-on effect of that, we also get questions on a yeah. lot. Okay, it, it is amazing how how the 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 maturity on many different, um, in many different areas as far as just awareness of the technology, awareness around the pricing. Right. Um, there are more case studies, um, and it's sort of a combination of things. There's more case studies that exist, but there are more case studies that exist and are being shared, just because my, my perspective, at least with the first few years, people were very cagey about sure. what they were doing. Um, uh, they didn't talk about it. Perhaps some of it was just to, to shield themselves from some of the bumps, bruises that they were collecting as they learned, but there were also some pretty good case studies out there people just thought were too strategically differentiating, I suppose, so they, mm -hmm. didn't, they didn't talk about it. So I, I think we both just have more grist for the mill now, and we're just seeing more case studies, I think. I, mean, it, it, I think it's you, a function of that, but you're also seeing the larger o uh, ROI come through as well. Okay. You know, you're starting, even when we first looked at this, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars of savings initially, yeah. right? Or $100,000 was a big number. 10 right. plus bots was a big deal. Now right. now you're seeing multi-millions. You, yeah. you see, um, 
I was looking last week at just some of the examples of big case studies, and you're seeing you know a big four firm take out you know, nearly twenty million dollars in its tax you know franchise because right. it internally put that that yep. product in place. Yeah. Now you're talking about big numbers, and yeah. that's I think once you start seeing that it snowballs and people you'll hear you know this really the senior leadership of public and private corporations will then come out and say, okay, I, yes. I'm, I've heard this, how, how do we participate? So I've, I I've, think that's, that, that will accelerate more and more of the use case. I'm intrigued by this, and I've talked about this a bit, is, is the senior leadership of, of large uh, public companies are, A, more aware of this, and B, are incorporating this into what I'm calling a top-down mandate, where there are a lot of large organizations that just declare we're going to reduce operating costs right. by and pick your your large number. I mean, you know, hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. And there and I get such a kick out of the fact that that one of the bullet points in the how is automating their their processes. Right. And so it's effectively I mean RPA and IA and AI and so it's become I'm not I'm not sure they fully understand it, not that they need to. I mean, they set direction and they sure. know that sort of the laws of physics suggest that this is actually real and can be applied, but, but that it's finding its way into these top-down mandates um, and making it into you know, earnings calls, you know, right. discussions with, with equity research to say, this is how we're doing it. So right. we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think that'll also yeah. then, from an investor standpoint, Others outside of just the pure tech industry will hear, okay, how are you actually driving that savings out of your business? Right. That will also add to, yeah. I think, some of, the, yeah. some of the fanfare in this area. Are there other, I mean, there's lots of different ways to measure success and outcome, right? One of them is removing um, costs from operations. Are there, are there other ways that you can, that, that as an equity analyst, that's, that's quant-driven, because the challenge that we've had, and just a bit of backdrop to this, is we also talk about things like improved quality or, or experience and stuff. But those are those are always sort of secondary or non-cashable. Or how do you do you care about that? Yeah, yeah because you well, can't I think you, measure it as well. It, it's very difficult to measure, right? But yeah. it's um, the avoidance of a massive compliance issue, right? Right. Error reduction. Yeah. Those are exactly. You think about that qualitatively when you analyze a company. Are yeah. they put? Are they investing in technology to help them? Right. A take out cost, but yeah. B mitigate risk, and right. I think that's something that certainly comes into an analysis. It's understanding our ultimately our, our companies investing ahead of their peers, and, and that I think is right. uh, there's no exact science to that, but yeah. it's, it's getting a feel for exactly how they're getting there and what they're doing. Does it add value? I mean, if you were looking at a if you were looking at sort of applying a value to a company, do you ask those questions of a, you, you is leadership to. being strategic about governance questions? Tools? You yeah. think about, okay. you know, you're starting to see more and more ESG related initiatives pop up. Okay. Um, so yeah. anything that, and obviously environmental, we're not talking here, but really that the government's um, aspect of uh, of a particular company, yeah. th these things are becoming um, requirements in certain funds. Yeah. And, and if, you know, a topic like this, right. um, they're able to, a public company can check the box by saying, look, hey, we've been investing in, in, in an automation solution, and obviously it's, it's going to help us reduce our, our cost in one way or another, but, but yeah. so too will it help us take down um, threats to our business that, it, that are much harder to measure. Right. That's so cool. It's so cool that, I mean, again, the, you know, credit to you to, to have had that insight three, four years ago, to have, have really um, spent the time to, to get to know all these companies and to cover it, because, I mean, who knew, I, I guess, maybe, maybe the trajectory made sense that this would become pervasive and, and end up in every sort of discussion from governance to environmental to compliance to operations, but it's kind of there. It's, it's uh, yeah, by luck or by... Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, luck is, I is how I attribute it. Yeah. To the services business, though, yeah. understanding how this was the next evolution of, of driving productivity into right. a model that had already, in certain cases, hit a wall. And already, yeah, you've I, already gotten the, the yeah. taken the low hanging fruit out of a lot of the services models yeah. just by the, the lift and shift nature of it. Now yeah. it was, okay, what else can I do? Right. That, uh, that initial cost has been come table stakes. Can yeah. I. It can actually bring some of this back on shore to then change the right. business process. And that, yeah. uh, that's, I think, have you seen some of these yeah. consultancies and services companies that the best ones really navigate this well. You write in one of your, your insights uh, newsletters about uh, process discovery and this sort of the perhaps one of the next waves. And sure. What do you talk about that? So I'd say um, 
another kind of thing we walked into understanding okay the RPA market itself yeah. is 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 certainly gained that awareness and it's picking picking up the adoption but when you look right. at broader automation initiatives you there are places where enterprise clients are just hitting the wall and right. it's ahead of the pro the RPA product it's also behind the product it's really trying to get that whole right. that the holistic initiative just isn't yet there right um, and we looked upstream and said okay what are Ultimately, what is the current process for identifying where you're going to install this automation? Nice. And then you go back to, you know, six-month whiteboarding exercises mm -hmm. with, uh, with consultancies. And obviously, oh, yeah. in many cases, that can be inefficient or expensive. Right. So you start to look, okay, oh, there's, there are software solutions. You know, they, mm -hmm. these companies certainly uh, were doing this uh, as well and yes. identifying, okay, there's a big opportunity here. So we, we kind of through the chain, I would say through the, the RPA channel, came across several yeah. uh, uh, of the process mining companies. What yeah. I find interesting is it's uh, it's gone beyond just the aspect of, of mining. It's you're seeing some of these solutions being used now as audit and compliance tools to help them ultimately map how right. processes are being done. So yeah. Sarbanes Oxley, for example, you can actually process map yeah. rather than having somebody deal with <laughs> um, just a significant amount of manual labor. But yeah. that that was an example of something that was okay. What is on the fringe of the RPA? And I, I yes. still would say uh, those fringes are. are Pretty immature. Uh, it, yeah. it is still leading a lot of clients to, to to hit that wall and not necessarily get what they yeah. were expecting when the CEO gave them that top-down mandate. But this is this is where we were three, four years ago. So we'll 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 next see each other at a yeah, exactly. at a, at a process <laughs> mining uh, event um, that'll have dozens of people. Uh, well, well, and then yeah, exactly. You know, I mean that just I, I, you know, I guess, but sort of in the in the earliest nascent days of the RPA space, where RPA wasn't necessarily the name that everyone identified or self-identified with, mm -hmm. it was it was a particular vendor that was using it. So others weren't as compelled to use it quite yet. They hadn't sort of hadn't all come to terms with it's a perfectly fine term. Let's just all use it. Um, we'll probably democratize around a, a name for process mining and then I'll end up at a process mining event. It's because we that, hang out absorbed the, yeah, into the, yeah. just an overall, right. yeah, that's right. You know, that's right, right. One, in, one singular yeah. platform. And I think yeah. that's where you see a lot of these providers trying to go. Yes. Um, I okay. think there's a push now where you, um, you know, we obviously attend a lot of different events, yeah. industry and product. We are so cool. <laughs> we hang out at the coolest places. Yes. Um, <laughs> but we, we attend a lot of these events, and you're, the message you're starting to hear now is unification yes. of these solutions. So yeah. we'll see if there'll be an actual right. uh, combination or, or consolidation of this market. Yeah. I think that's something that the enterprise clients want. And some of them want. They want kind of that one. Right. You know, like like services say, one throat to choke. They want one provider yeah. to say, okay, you're, you are my platform. And you're, you're seeing some of them try and develop these capabilities organically. Yeah. Others, I think, with, with significant levels well, of funding, you'll right. probably see some combinations some as, yeah. as we go through here uh, over yeah. the next couple of years. Yeah. But then I, and then on the back end, what do you do with you know some of the data that comes out of these processes? That's that's right. a whole other ballgame. So the AI terminology, as far as um, it's a it's a broad um, sort of umbrella term under which there's lots of different right. uh, constituent parts, but the data that's created in, 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 the, in the digitization efforts will feed it. Correct. Um, it'll be interesting to see what comes next. I mean, have you, are you seeing enterprises are mature enough to, to no. be asking that? Okay, so no, yeah. I think they're, they're still I, now uh, getting past the fact that AI isn't one singular acronym. Right. I think that's the key is, okay, yeah. what, does this, what am I talking about when I yeah. say that? Yes. What am I going to do with this data? Yeah. Is it, we're yeah, talking, yeah. Uh, you know, a, a language processing engine to take something further right. From, right. You know, within finance and accounting. What are we, it, it's, I, I would say we are probably even earlier than we were three years ago with, yeah. with uh, our pay in that front. Well, and it's, it, from your perspective, I would imagine that the Oh, there's sort of there's two realities. There's a lion's share of investment being made in AI by the beasts who are public, right. like the Facebooks and Amazons right. and Microsofts of the world, uh, and then there's just countless startups. I mean, I, I, you have some of those visual representations of all the AI startups. And I you, just think the saturation uh, of yeah, exactly. unicorns today is just right. incredible. Right. But yeah. you're right. The, the, yeah. the, the, whereas you only have a, a small, I would say, smaller set in that. RPA and process mining, you, yeah. the, you just multiply it by tens of thousands as far as yeah. once you get to the back end or yeah. uh, you know, the downstream here when we're talking yeah. uh, yeah. under the umbrella of AI. It's, and you do have a very diverse spectrum of companies in that too with, like you said, the, right. the, the large 
digital natives all the way down right. to you know to just single entities that that are coming up with one interesting idea. I think yeah. that how that blends with the existing automation ecosystem will be interesting. Right. Um, yeah. Because that's that again, you're going to have the same challenges on that end as you are right on the on, on the early side. Yeah. No. And and I mean it's it's complex. Right. right. It's super complex, and I think people will need shepherds and guides to just help them just understand the the vocabulary, let alone the puzzle pieces available, so let that's alone why you're here. whether they well and, and you too, my friend. Um, I think we 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 both worked um, hard to educate different industry right. and yeah different, but. Um, you know, hopefully it's working. I mean, yeah. People are aware of this stuff. There are thousands of people at every event we go to now. And I give you full credit for that. It's all because of the it. work you're doing. So. So, so what's next? What's next for, for Brian Bergen? Uh, I would say from a sense of going downstream, looking, as yeah. we just talked about, what, what, which are going to be the early successes as you integrate pieces into right. um, the current products that are, that yeah. are really driving traction. Okay. Um, that, that's first and foremost, I would yeah. say. Have you ever, I mean, you're, you, look at, you look at public companies, have you ever, I mean, the amount of knowledge you have to interpret the private companies is, is sort of insane. There's, there's a lot, I mean, how do you, help, do you help your customers understand, I mean, they should be wanting to invest in the, the private companies. Right? There's, some there's are. Gotta be, some, yeah. some are if they can. Yeah. So it's, it's helping them with that. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, ultimately where all of these products fit in the ecosystem is, right. is really a, the biggest challenge that you have yeah. um, from the investment side. And then understanding the, what types of risks can come and just right. cannibalize away what, what you thought to be in, you know, yep. uh, a good investment. I think that's also the same position that some of the automation providers themselves are sitting in. We get that yes. question a lot is why yeah. if, if these are such strong um, or that's a bad word. If these are such um, great products, why hasn't a yes. na name a big Something large enterprise software them. company? Why, why haven't they bought yeah. them? Why haven't they just built it themselves? Well, I'd yeah. say these things have been here for a long time. It's just now the fact that they, yep. the tech combined with the marketing has just clicked. It is really interesting because yeah, you, you do feel like one of them would be. I mean, now some once you're once you're as expensive as some of them it, it becomes harder and harder, harder to do. yeah right. although i mean there are still enterprises that have the the, the wherewithal to buy sure. these these massive beasts but uh but or do they become the next massive beast is is interesting as you say there's it's different than the erps of the past in some ways and so it's it'll be it is but it isn't you have a market right now with you know, yeah. three significant providers, That's and it, true. does that become right? It's next sort of like the SAP Oracle exactly. dynamic. Exactly. Yeah. Does that become? Yeah. Do we see that dynamic in five years, yeah. ten years? That's uh, that's so something we've been asking. Who's Larry Ellison in this equation? <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, and that I, I I would imagine becomes just that much more interesting because there's more, you know, more enterprises to actually cover the way that you cool. you so well cover them. It goes so. along with how do you define the TAM of the market? Okay. Right. And, yeah. and how do you define a TAM when the technology continues to change at a, at a you know, accelerated pace? Right. Because that right. is only getting you know, wider and wider yeah. as the opportunity set, right, of, yeah. of processes. You kind of move up the chain right. on what this can actually be applied to yeah. as the technology gets better and as you bring more pieces into it. So that, that's another question is yeah, how do you define TAM? And, and for us it was, okay, well, let's just think about if you take the Fortune 2000 companies, right. what does 1% or a half a percent of their SG&A spend? Yeah, it's a massive number. Yep, yeah. right. It's yeah. well above what the current license base or the three to four x services base is. That's true. On top of the license revenues yeah. today, and puts it in, in perspective. So, so it's that that I think is why you see it yeah. does justify in yeah. certain cases yeah. uh, why the the, the eye opening numbers you, yeah. you're seeing today in, in the investments in some of these entities. Do you think so? There's there's depending on, on who you ask and how you evaluate it. There's there's impending. Of recession or slowdown possibly coming, maybe or not. But does does this class of technologies is it helped by by a slowdown, or or will it, it will it slow down the growth of this so it, industry? It certainly has defensive aspects to it, right? Because right. at the end of the day, yeah. a significant um, I would say percentage of the rationale is cost takeout, still, yeah. right? It, yeah. That's the first reason the client's going to engage in, and pursue right. an initiative here. Yeah. Uh, so I would say the defensive characteristics of that are supportive of, um, you know, certainly not talking a, a great financial crisis or any paralysis, but it's just sure. a moderate recession. You'd say, how do I get more costs out of my business? Right. This is an enabler to that. Tool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's something that I think would be supported. There may be some discretionary projects that are for more advanced <clears> companies <throat> that, that are 
you know, more tests or proof of concepts. Those are the kind of things you would see go first. Right, right. But, but I would say largely um, you, would, you would see the services and the consultancies push this as a as way as to the, drive more right. cost out yeah. for their own reasons as well to, yeah. to, to drive their revenue base higher too. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I'm, 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 I'm anticipating would happen. And sure. I sort of hope does happen because um, we've talked about this before. There's, there is awareness but not maturity. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, there's a few people with a lot and a lot of people with, with a little. Um, uh, as far as uh, adoption and deployment of, of sort of mature automation. And so to have that sort of kick in the butt, uh, in addition to those top-down mandates that just say, you know, team, we've got to remove a billion from our operating costs. Right. Um, and now, now we need to to stay competitive because, because the market's becoming a little bit tougher. Or the winds are changing on us. So. And you see um, you know, a lot of providers, it is a land grab right now. Yes. So it's, fine. it's an early stages, so it's a function of early stages. But it also, too, it could be providers saying, you know what, we have to get ahead of, right. um, we have to get ahead of a potential slowdown because you're, you know, you're not going to have as many people going to conferences like yes. where we are today yeah. in an event where people are trying to cut more costs. But if you're at least in... Yes. Because you've already... Then you've planted the seed. Yeah, you've planted you can, the seed. You yeah, have the ability yeah. to grow in an entity, yeah. if, particularly if you're demonstrating yeah. you know, good, good ROI. Cool. Um, that's outstanding. Well, thank you. Um, any, other, any other topics should we cover? What's, <laughs> what do you think would be, what would be the coolest headline you could write or that you would like to, to see in the market around this space or uh -huh. RPA, AI, funding? Uh, I would think it would be something along the lines of, of one of the... Uh, one of the RPA providers becoming a broader platform and then yeah. all of a sudden taking out a large software company that we're talking about today as a, yeah. as a potential acquirer of them. I think that yeah. uh, that would be the most interesting thing here. Well, well, Brian, thank you so much. I really appreciate you of course. Thank you for spending your valuable time. Um, I'll, um, I'll share links to your, well, I guess you've got some stuff public on, on the website, things like interviews you and I did, sure. and uh, if anyone wants to, to reach out and, and get a hold of your, your insights it's newsletter, which is, you know. which is outstanding work. Thank so, you. cool. Appreciate it. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Yep. Take care.